What's up my fellow weirdos on the internet and welcome back to the channel and welcome to our little weird family over here and weird is a good thing to me so just saying and welcome to this wild ass aries full moon video man this aries full moon is not coming to play this is a very very powerful time you guys and so I really, really suggest that you watch this video, especially the first part of this video. And if you're new to one of these videos, basically what I do is I go over the full moon and the upcoming two weeks ahead and what we're all going to experience as a collective, no matter who you are, no matter what sign you are, and all of the possibilities that may be coming up in your life. And then I just briefly take a couple minutes at the end of the video to go over each sign and where each sign could experience these themes specifically. So if you're missing the first part of the video, Video and you're just going directly to your sign, you're missing out on a lot. They all go together. Each part of the video goes together. And so definitely make sure you watch this first part of the video. Also, happy birthday to me. I'm filming this a day before my birthday on October 18th. And yeah, also before we get started, if you want exclusive content from me, like uncensored weekly lives where we go deep into the astrology what's going on in the world and how all of these astrology transits can affect you and one question tarot readings rituals and tons more check out my patreon down below i have tons of different memberships a lot of them are affordable and you can get exclusive content i also get asked a lot if i do readings and i do do readings you can book a reading with me on my website the link is down below and with that being said make sure to comment down below and like this this video before you leave let me know down below if you're seeing any of these themes happening because I would love to know I love hearing your feedback and this is some intense energy and I would really love to know how it's affecting some of you guys all right with that being said let's get into this crazy ass Aries full moon Alrighty, you guys, so I am recording my screen so you can see what the hell I'm talking about. I know a lot of you guys like when I do that because it kind of helps give you a visual of what the hell is going on here. So basically, as you can see, we have this full moon happening in the sign of Aries, and we know it's a full moon. And we know it's a full moon because we have the sun directly opposite of the moon. Uh, here in the sign of Libra. And so a full moon is when the sun and the moon are directly opposite of each other in the sky. They're basically, you know, on two whole different ends as far as they can get from each other. Now, this full moon is very, well, really any Aries full moon is kind of intense because Aries is that first fire sign, that cardinal fire energy, really bringing up like initiation, you know, that spark, right? Aries is like lighting a match. It's that spark. It's that inspiration. It's assertive. It's impulsive. And so we really have that energy kind of coming in with this Aries full moon where we're going to be feel feeling fiery and instinctive. Now, and also kind of primal, Aries also brings up kind of this primal energy. Now, with this full moon, though, it's interesting because the ruler of Aries is Mars, right? And Mars rules our actions and it rules masculinity, conflict, and also impulsion. Um, and so we have Mars here opposite of this full moon in its opposite sign of Libra. So it, it really, Mars does not really like to be in Libra because Libra is about relationships and other people. And Mars is about the self, the individual independence, you know, doing its own thing. Uh, marching to the beat of its own drum. So we've likely had over these last several weeks a lot of things coming up with this where there's kind of this a lot of self versus other themes, you know, a lot of things regarding relationships, other people versus ourselves and what we want and what we desire versus the opinions and needs and wants of others. That's kind of like a large underlying theme with this specific full moon as well. What makes this full moon even more interesting is that we have Mars coming into its square with Pluto, okay? And that's where shit gets crazy because it creates this T-square with the full moon and Pluto. Sorry, that looks like shit, but just excuse me. <laughs> We're not here for my uh, notepad drawing skills. But anyway, so this is really bringing up some conflicts, okay? This is really bringing up things that need to be faced. And this is why I'm really calling this full moon kind of like the phoenix rising from the ashes type of energy here. Because Pluto, what does Pluto rule, right? Pluto rules the collective unconscious. Pluto rules 
the darkness, things that are unseen, things that are shady, mysterious, uh, things that go on in the darkness, secrets. Uh, it also rules crime and, you know, Mars and Pluto together kind of does bring up this theme of like power struggles and possible abuse and shading us, not saying that we're all going to get abused or something crazy, but emotional abuse, physical abuse, whatever, powerlessness could be a really big theme that comes up from past situations with this particular full moon because it needs to be addressed. Certain traumas, certain past influences, uh, certain toxic patterns, toxic behaviors, taking things to an extreme, certain addictions, overexerting ourselves, where we have not allowed ourselves to face these things, this tension within us is going to be very, very big around this time for this particular full moon. And we're going to talk a lot about this in just a sec. So we have Mars square Pluto, right? So Pluto is the underworld, that which is hidden, the collective unconscious, darkness, transformation, power, regeneration, control, obsession. It's our relationship to the shadow side and death, rebirth, deep, intense experiences, ruthlessness, resourcefulness, brutality, crime, harm. Also the effects of not accepting one's shadow and how that impacts society at large. And so with this, what we have and what I really feel here is a massive collective shift in the collective unconscious. We are going to be seeing these archetypes, these themes play out in somewhere, somewhere in our lives or even in the lives of others, even just watching the news or, you know, whatever, like some movie that we decide to turn on. There's this kind of depth to it. There's this massive depth to this full moon that is really pushing us to face situations where we feel powerless okay, to face relationship situations where we feel powerless, to face our own powerlessness in regards to other people. So we can really notice like, what has power over us during this time? Where can, where do we feel we cannot exert ourselves or make decisions for ourselves? Where are our decisions influenced by other people? Where do we feel we cannot go after our desires or claim independence in some area of our lives. That is really, really big for this particular full moon. This full moon can also be showing us where we feel we need to prove ourselves, where we are like in competition with other people or within ourselves. It's bringing up control issues. It is bringing up where we're overdoing things toxic relationships or toxic behaviors or relationship dynamics and addressing these things. Our actions are also being called into question at this time or uh, our inaction. Where are we not taking action on something? Where are we not asserting ourselves? Where are we not speaking up for ourselves in some way, shape, or form here? This is all coming up around this Aries full moon and will play out over this these next couple weeks. Where are we letting others decide for us? Where are others influencing who we are? Where are we allowing others to influence who, who we are, our decisions, our desires, our actions? Where have others or the opinions of others held us back. This is really showing us a new side to who we are, a new side of ourselves, a new side of how our identity, and also possibly certain people, relationships, certain patterns that need to be faced and addressed. This is about facing darkness, you guys. No bullshit, facing darkness. This is about really rising above, seeing where, what has power over you and where are you letting it have power over you. This is also about facing fears, facing trauma, facing pain, facing, facing that dark shit that you've avoided. But this Aries full moon gives us an opportunity to do that, even though it may be intense, even though it may hurt a little bit, it may be hard, it may be stressful, it may cause us to have a breakdown, but maybe that breakdown is what's needed. Maybe that 
pain is what's needed to grow. And this is what I always say, but when you look back through your life, you've probably grown the most through those dark transformative situations. And that's why Pluto rules things like transformation. It is like a death and rebirth because death is actually the creation, right? Death is actually creation. They are the same fucking thing because nothing dies and just dies and that's it. Like it get, it's created into something else, right? Energy can never be destroyed, right? So this is a time of really addressing those things from our past, those dark hidden things that we've been putting off. And they've probably been very apparent over the last few weeks because we've had a lot of Pluto action coming up here. So this is the third quarter squares to Pluto before these planets conjunct Pluto the end of this year, beginning of next year. And so this is like a massive time where we are ending something, where we are coming out the other side of something that's been going on for a year or a little over a year now. Th then that's why I'm saying this is like a phoenix rising moment, right? When you look back at your life and those painful situations, that's likely where you grew the most, where you found yourself the most, where you felt more aligned to yourself the most, like where you found out who you really were. Those moments that tested you, that felt like, oh my God, I'm never gonna get through this is impossible i feel like i'm dying you know those really traumatic painful intense fucking moments those struggles are where you grew the absolute most not that good times or happy times aren't like you know like aren't good but you don't necessarily grow in those times like you do with the intense penetrating you know shakeups, right? Like those intense, painful, penetrating times, those are the times that you grew the most. And why do they have to hurt so bad? Why do they have to be so painful? Because that's what creates the change, you guys. If the, if it's not felt, you forget about it a few days later, right? Like if, if there's not some kind of intense feeling behind it, then you forget about it very easily. You're not, you don't remember it as much. So for that to stick, for those things to stick, it has to be profound enough, right? It has to shake you up enough. You have to feel it enough. And then those are, that's why you remember those times in the first place. And so this Aries full moon is really about facing our shadow, facing our darkness, right? You cannot have light without darkness and you get to light by facing the darkness because the more you run away from it and try to run towards light, the light, the bigger your shadow gets, the more it overpowers you, the more it controls you, right? And you have no power over it. But when you integrate, when you find a way to sit with those painful feelings, when you find a way to work through those experience, those past experiences that hurt, have that full so circle moment where you come back to it, you surrender to it, you feel it and you let it transform you, then you grow then you have an awakening, then you end up being the phoenix rising, right? And so this is really one of those times where it's like, oh, I feel more aligned with myself now. I see these behaviors. Now for everybody, it's not gonna be that. For some people, those behaviors might come up and it may seem very tempting or feel very tempting to redo them, right? To continue to exhibit them, to continue to use those behaviors or fall into those behaviors. For others, it might come up and you may try to fight it or resist it or ignore it or block it out. And that's going to make it 10 times worse. That's going to be where you're really feeling it and you start struggling because you're fighting it instead of sitting with it, feeling it and moving through it, right? You have to move through these energies, feel them, let them change you instead of resisting them and trying to block them out and run from them. That is not going to work. This is a time of addressing fears. This is a time of addressing the things that we've been putting off, that we've been scared of, that we haven't wanted to face. Um, this is a time of really standing up and doing something different. And through that experience, we grow, we have some kind of awakening, we have some kind of really intense and profound realization. We get that independence back, we get our power back. 
okay? That's how that happens. Now, another thing happening for this full moon is Mercury, which will now be direct by this full moon, will be opposite Chiron again, which tells me, once again, another theme of facing our wounds, healing our wounds, seeing another side to our wounds, seeing where we didn't take action, we didn't assert ourselves. You know, we basically were trying to avoid conflict externally therefore we started conflict internally and this is facing that conflict this is seeing it from all sides and this is moving and rising above it this is feeling it and not running from it right and so that is what i believe this aries full moon will be about and what i already see themes happening with this aries full moon and to top it off we even have it in the cards so we had the lovers and the seven of cups come out reversed and so definitely a lot being revealed with relationships, past relationships, old relationships, our relationship, our relationship dynamics. You know, with the Seven of Cups reversed here, it's like the smoke is clearing in some situation regarding our relationships, where we are starting to see things more clearly, where we were under some kind of illusion for so long, where we weren't seeing things clearly. We were just like under this illusion of wanting it a certain way but really it wasn't that way you know another thing that makes sense with this that's happening is venus is coming into a square with neptune over these next couple weeks and so we're definitely going to have some moments of that where it's like we realize we've been under some kind of illusion or spell or that we've been you know confused about our feelings or trying to not feel certain things regarding relationships or past relationships. A lot of people could be experiencing conflict or struggle in their relationships around this time uh, over these next couple weeks and probably already have been. Um, we also have judgment and the devil. And so this really tells me this is some kind of massive awakening from facing our addictions, obsessions, trauma, you know, old past behaviors, defense mechanisms, toxic situations, toxic relationships. Like this is facing some kind of major fear, reconciling the past, forgiving and surrendering. Um, this is such a big deal, you guys. We also, I forgot to show you, had the Ten of Cups that came out after the Lovers and the Seven of Cups. Um, so with this Ten of Cups here, I feel like this is basically saying like we are letting go of some kind of illusion. It's like a reality check kind of energy. We're letting go of some kind of illusion that we've been seeing or that we've been under regarding relationships in our lives, regarding certain people in our lives. We are letting go of certain people, old relationship dynamics and uh old connections, you know, where we thought our expectations didn't match reality, right? What we wanted didn't quite match reality. And so this is dreaming up a new reality, some kind of new future, some kind of new vision for your future. It's almost like you had these kind of you were kind of delusional about your future with a certain person or with certain people, certain friends, whatever. For some people, it could be family, you know what I mean? And we start to realize that uh, over these next couple weeks, which I think is going to be a beautiful thing. That is basically what I have for this Aries full moon, you guys. Definitely, I would really, really, really appreciate it if you could let me know down below if you see any of these themes or if you've already been seeing any of these themes. I think this Aries full moon will be a lot easier on those that have been facing things from their past and have been moving through it instead of trying to avoid it or escape it or run from it um, or resist it. Like this is not a time of resistance. It may feel it may feel very easy to resist it at this time. Like it, that may be your like your first instinct because you're used to it. But if you can just take a second and allow the Plutonian energy to transform you. If you can face it, if you can stand up to it, if you can do the harder thing, if you can do the thing that you know you need to do, but it's hard, right? Like it's like, shit, I don't wanna do that. That is what is going to transform you. That is where you are going to feel the most powerful. That's where you're going to feel the best about yourself. That's where you're going to feel like 
more aligned with who you really are and more proud of yourself. That's where you're going to have some kind of awakening, okay? So that is what I'm getting specifically for this Aries full moon. So on top of that, the next couple weeks are going to be very, very crazy. <laughs> and I'm probably gonna start doing the November videos a little bit early so I can cover a lot that's going on right at the very end of October. Um, like I said, Venus is gonna square Neptune. But on top of that, you know, once the sun moves into Scorpio, um, it's going to start coming into its square with Saturn in Aquarius. And this is definitely going to be a time of power moves, big things are going to be coming over these next couple of weeks, especially globally and um, with the U.S., okay? So a lot of financial stuff is going to start coming up in the very near future. A lot of economical themes are going to be coming up in the very near future. And a lot of things, I think, with our leadership and stuff like that, I actually did a TikTok that I have on my Instagram and on my TikTok that I, where I made some predictions about Biden coming up in November. He's got a lot of stuff happening, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so anyways, and then the sun will eventually oppose Uranus too by the end of the month. So this is going to be some massive shakeups wherever we have Scorpio and Taurus in our lives and um, we're in our charts. And so things are going to start getting really, really intense and lots is going, even more is going to be revealed. You know, things are really going to be exposed uh, over these next couple of weeks. And there could be a lot of tension, but at the same time, motivation where it's like, you know, there's things that you desire, there's things that you want, but you're feeling restricted or you're feeling uh, like you can't share them or you're feeling like maybe other people are not wanting to listen or just aren't going to accept you if you share these things. And so, um, yeah, watch out for those things. But basically, that is everything uh, for the astrology. We are going to go ahead and get into the sign. So make sure that uh, you watch your rising sign because that is the sign that will resonate with you the most. And yeah, thank you guys so, so much. And yeah, let's get into it. Starting with you, Aries, since it is a full moon in your sign, this is going to be quite an intense time for you, Aries, because this full moon is in your sign. So this is going to bring up a lot of to do with your relationships and your own independence, your own, the things that you want and your desires versus your partner and uh, any other close one-on-one -on -one relationships that you have in your life. So there could be some things that you're wanting to move forward with. You know, there could be some big decisions that you are trying to make, um, but it's feeling like, you know, there's just a lot of focus on your relationships right now. And, you know, also there could be some kind of tie between or some kind of clash between beliefs or worldviews or travel or, you know, learning or something like that. You're really focused on, you know, things that you want to do, your own goals, but there are also things going on with certain people in your life, your partner, etc., and so this is definitely a time where you're trying to get back to you, what you want, you desire, where your desires and what you need to take action on are really going to be highlighted. That's really what's coming up for you. You know, you, you your health, your, you know, body, your vitality, your, you know, how your, your appearance, things like this. But, you know, what I really get is like just getting back to who you are and seeing a new side of yourself. Uh, having like a new version of yourself kind of rising from the ashes here and really figuring out how to take action on something to make some kind of decision regarding relationships in your life or you know it could for some of you it could be your partner going through that or somebody close to you going through that so that is basically what I'm seeing for you Aries if you didn't watch the first part of this where I went into a lot more depth go watch that and just remember that all of that is basically happening in terms of you versus your relationships. And so that can give you more clarity and even more information. So definitely let me know down below if this resonates and you see these themes happening. I'd really love 
to hear about it and we're gonna move on to Taurus. Alrighty Taurus, so this full moon is happening in your 12th and 6th house, okay? So this is bringing up a lot of subconscious stuff, a lot of subconscious patterns, a lot of subconscious behaviors, a lot of possible self-sabotaging behaviors or things that you didn't realize, certain secrets or behind the scenes stuff. This could be a time where you are really needing to take a step back to focus on you to get away from a certain situation that maybe had been stressing you out or that where you've been focusing a lot, like certain relationships in your day-to-day -day life, certain co-worker situations, relationships at work, etc. This is a time of getting back to you and doing things that make you feel independent. It's also a time of reflecting on your inaction on certain, certain situations. Where are you letting other people decide? Decide for you instead of deciding for yourself? Where are you putting yourself in certain situations that end up somehow excluding you or coming back to you or backfiring on you? This is a time of facing certain fears in regards to your worldviews, your beliefs, um, things like this. This is a time of really getting down to why you are possibly, you know, repressing certain parts of yourself or repressing your own independent ideas or your own independent inspirations, uh, the things that you want to take action on. And so this would be a really great time to harmonize that, you know, to harmonize the part of you that really wants to take action, that really wants to be independent in some way or do something on your own uh, with the part of you that may be wanting to be out in the world or um, you know that has other things to do how are the things that you're possibly repressing that you feel powerless over that you've been fighting how are those like affecting your day-to-day -day life and routines um, that could really come up around this time for you Taurus so this is a time of really facing that stuff and addressing that stuff Okay, so um, yeah, that is what I have for you, Taurus. Hopefully that resonates. Definitely let me know uh, down below. Okay, moving on to you, Gemini. So for Gemini, this is coming up in the area of your social life, your friends, you know, where you feel like you don't have enough independence regarding your friends, your social situations. You could be taking the lead on something here. Uh, there could be some kind of conflict to do with friends, your social life, or uh, certain relationships in your life, you know, where it's like, okay, I just need to be alone, or I just, I'm gonna be the lone wolf. I need to be the pioneer in this, you know? This is really bringing up where you may have had past trauma in terms of asserting your independence in a friend situation um, or with a lover situation, asserting yourself or making independent decisions, following your own independence, following your own self rather than others or letting others make the decisions for you. You know, where do you need to assert your independence? This is really what this is about. For some of you, this somehow could involve uh, certain financial stuff or resources, time, energy, whatever that you've been giving to someone else or that someone else has been giving to you, uh, that someone owes you or you owe someone else. You know, but this is really bringing up where you may need to take action on something or face something regarding your social life, relationships, uh, things like that. For some of you, it could also somehow involve children uh, or your passions, your creative endeavors or desires in some way. But definitely relationships is a really big, your relationships and social life are friends, like-minded people, etc. cetera. Um, you know, you could be maybe saying goodbye to certain connections in your life or cutting out certain connections in your life as well. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. If you didn't watch the first part of this video where I talked about, I went really in depth about other things that are going on, um, go watch that and definitely make sure when you're watching it that you know what's happening in your areas of your friends and social life um, and relationships, love, etc. Also, sexuality is another thing that could come up I just thought of that uh, for Gemini so stuff to do with your sexuality uh, 
could have been coming up recently and maybe coming up for this full moon as well. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating. All right, Cancer. So this full moon for you is happening in your 10th house, which is one of the cardinal houses. So this is a big deal. This is your career, your public image, your reputation, what it is that you want to do in your life, your achievements, the things that you're building towards the accomplishments that you want to make, the legacy that you want to leave behind, authority figures. So you could see those themes really coming up for this full moon. Where do you need to take charge in a career situation? Where do you need to uh, put yourself out there? Where have you been holding back your feelings or your decisions regarding a career or regarding relationships or regarding family? You know, where have you been letting family dictate your decisions or dictate your desires, dictate what you want to do? Where have you been kind of like trying to be there for family or the people close to you? Um, where have you been kind of, you know, being passive in that regard. And this could be something that maybe you need to speak up about, you know, maybe you need to um, not hold things in. Maybe you need to ask for help. You know what I mean? Um, so this could be a time where you're feeling kind of fired up and where you're like, for some of you could be claiming independence from a certain you know, situation that's going on in your life regarding those that are close to you, your living situation, your home, or relationships. Um, for others of you, it could be that you are, uh, you know, really needing to face something regarding those things, relationships, uh, family, home, etc. But either way, it's like, you know, you're going through a very private time right now where you may be feeling a little bit more private or keeping things to yourself more. But this could be a time where it's like, you need to share that. You need to get it out. You need to broadcast it. You need to let people know what's going on. Okay, so that's what I'm getting for you, Cancer. This also, really quick, this could also involve some tension between family, home life, living situation versus people in your life, relationships, etc. So uh, exes as well could be something, but uh, definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating for you, Cancer. If you didn't watch the first half of this video, you're missing a lot. Um, so definitely uh, watch the first half of this video because it will explain a lot more. Um, and this is basically just about where it's happening, like in your life, the areas of life that you're going to notice it in. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to Leo. Leo, this full moon is happening in our ninth house. I'm a Leo rising too. So this is really bringing up our belief systems, what we believe, what we have faith in, our potential, what it is that we want to do, where it is that we want to go, the places we want to see, and the new experiences that we want to have, where we want to get out of our comfort zone and experience new things and where we're really seeing our potential, what all that could be, where we're having some kind of new vision, new inspiration, um, or even an old inspiration resurfacing. Motivations, learning, education, travel, all of those things are covered by this area. This is definitely some kind of awakening to a new vision for Leo or one resurfacing, like I was saying before, um, where we are seeing things from a whole different perspective. Our perspective is really changing on a lot of different things at this time. Uh, we are seeing how certain relationships in our lives, uh, certain people that we used to hang around or certain people that we used to be near, um, you know, and certain trauma that may have happened there, uh, certain possibly things to do with dating, sexuality coming up with Venus and our fifth, uh, ruling over our third house of Libra. So there could be a lot of things coming up from the past that need to be faced and addressed that are possibly affecting where we feel powerful, where we want to find our power, our sense of authority, our sense of individuality in the world. And so those things need to be addressed, okay? Uh, you also want to be very careful, I will say this next week, driving. Um, I've been doing this as well ever since the Mercury retrograde started. That's in our third house. So if you're a Leo rising, be very careful with driving, any kind of transportation this week, because uh, there could be some issues there um, or, you know, just that Mercury Pluto square is very intense. And so that worries me a little bit. So I would just say if you're driving to make sure you are being very aware and that you are like being responsible around this time that you do not road rage could be a possibility here and that could not end very well so 
just be careful around this time. Make sure that you're very aware of your surroundings, which really is also what this full moon is about, being aware of your surroundings and showing you where you weren't, showing you where you didn't make decisions, where you didn't assert yourself, where you tried to keep the peace instead of start conflict. But this is showing you a higher vision of that, another side of that, and showing you a new perspective to show you that you can assert yourself, that it's, you know, that really when you don't, you start a conflict within you. And so it's better to speak up. It's better to assert yourself. It is better to take action rather than just waiting or waiting for someone else to decide. So that is what I'm getting for us, Leo. If you didn't listen to the first part of this video, you're really missing out. So go listen to that. It, it adds a lot more context to all that. And uh, let me know down below if your horoscope resonated. I would really love to hear your experiences and come back and let me know what happens for your full moon this week. I'd really love to hear about it. So, so for Virgo, this full moon is happening in your eighth house. Okay, so this is really bringing up where you are wanting to be independent regarding finances and resources, other people's influence on your money or money that you owe to other people or money that people owe to you. Where do you need to break out of certain situations where you're tied to certain things or people, but you want that independence, you want to claim independence from it. This full moon's really bringing up themes of like independence in business, independence in money, independence in finances. It's also bringing up themes of where you may need to assert your independence in certain situations where you may have been giving up some of your independence or some of your desires for the sake of something that you felt you needed to be secure, something that you felt you needed uh, to feel safe in some way. And so this is a time of really facing those things and addressing those things. This could also be a time of some conflict or tension arising to do with a partner, um, a certain affair, certain love interests, dating, children, those kinds of things could come up around this time, something that needs to be faced, certain fears or certain trauma or past things that come up that need to be faced around this time. So definitely watch out for that as well. This could also be bringing up some things from your childhood or uh, childhood influences that somehow influenced your money, security, or relationships in some way. So definitely let me know down below, Virgo, if that ends up resonating for you. And uh, if you haven't already, definitely make sure to go back and watch the first half of this video because it's really important. It gives a lot more context. So moving on to Libra. So for my fellow Librans, um, Libra rising will resonate most. I'm not a Libra rising, but I'm a Libra sun. <laughs> but um, for my fellow uh, Librans out there, this full moon is happening in your seventh house. So this is really, really big about relationships, right? Uh, where either your partner or you may be feeling a little bit more fired up this week, a little bit more impulsive, a little bit more wanting independence in their life, like in some way, somehow, in some form or another. Really needing to do something for themselves or you may be needing to do something for yourself. You know, there's something here that, sorry, there's this chick walking around with like a rig light and like filming herself on the phone. She keeps walking by. But anyways, um, there's something here, you know, between you and your relationships, the people that you're close to. Uh, for some of you, this could also involve family, your past, your childhood, your home life, your living situation in some way. And then um, also your environment, your surroundings. And so uh, definitely let me know down below if you see any of those themes coming up this week. I'd really love to hear about it. There could be some conflicts that happen this week, especially in regards to uh, family, in regards to your home life, your living situation, your past, etc. So if you didn't watch the first half of this video, go, though, make sure to definitely do that. It will give you a lot more context. Moving on, so to Scorpio. For Scorpio, this full moon is happening in your sixth house of your health, your work, your day-to-day -day things that you do, kind of the unglamorous things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis where you don't really get like a lot of recognition. It's just things that you got to do. You know, it's like shit that has to be done. Um, so with the full moon happening here, this could be a time where you are 
wanting more independence in your daily routines, your work life with coworkers. Like, you know, this is not a team thing, you know, you're wanting more independence or with your health, you know, maybe you are really thinking about working out, you're thinking about starting some kind of um, physical activity or some kind of exercise regime, you know, like you're, you're trying to do something here that, you know, is going to help you move your energy to help you be more physical, you know, to help you claim more independence, to help you be more singular in something in your day to day life. So this is really like actions that need to be taken in your day to day life and your day to day routines um, that maybe you've been avoiding because of relationships in some way or out of fear of what other people will think in some way. Um, maybe you've been you know, doing something behind the scenes with relationships or like, you know, secluded yourself from certain relationships or you and someone else have been secluding themselves or kind of just off in your own little, you know, world. But this is a time where it's like getting back to reality and focusing on you and not just, you know, letting things pass you by, letting other people decide for you, etc. So this is a time of probably addressing uh, some fears and facing some things in regards to that. There could be some shadowy stuff going on in your local environment with, you know, close friends or people around you, things around you um, that could draw up some tension this week or that maybe you're trying to avoid this week um, where maybe you need to speak up or, you know, something along those lines. So, let me know down below, Scorpio, if that ends up resonating. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. Also, if you didn't hear the first part of this video, make sure to go back and watch that because it's really important and gives a lot more context. Moving on to Sag. So for Sag, this full moon for you is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, sexuality, dating, pleasure, fun, and children, and creation. Uh, so this is a time where those things are really coming up. Um, this could actually be a pretty good time for uh, romance and, you know, getting spicy, and uh, possibly this could be bringing up some, like, dark interest that you have or some taboo interest that you have. Certain trauma or shadow stuff regarding security or insecurity, uh, possibly even to do with money, possessions, resources, what you own or what you have to offer. And so those kinds of things could be coming up. But on the flip side, this Aries full moon could be really bringing up a lot of action or um, inspiration regarding a certain project um, or something creative, something fun that you've been wanting to do. Um, it could be involving children as well. There could be some, if it's involving ch children, there could be some tensity there happening between uh, your child and security finances stuff. You may be addressing childhood wounds regarding insecurity, money, finances, what you own that kind of thing. Uh, so this is definitely, those are definitely some things that you could be seeing come up around this time. You could also be noticing uh, some themes coming up with friends, groups, your social life. Sorry, there's someone outside talking, but um, your social life, you know, like-minded people um, where maybe, maybe you need to get back to something that you love instead of kind of hanging out with so many people or being around so many people or being invested in so many people in some way or, or another. So yeah, that's what I'm seeing for you, Saj. Let me know down below if that resonated. I'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, if you didn't watch the first part of this video, make sure you do that because it has a lot more context. But uh, yeah, we're gonna move on to Capricorn. So Capricorn, this full moon for you, is in your fourth house, okay? And so um, this could be bringing up a lot to do with family, home life, your living situation, your past, your childhood, um, and possibly some conflict, aggression, impulsiveness going on with your home or even your parents, um, something along those lines that needs to be addressed, certain actions that need to be reflected upon in the home, in the family, 
uh, with the childhood that are somehow contributing to you now and where you're going in the world, who you've grown into, who you've become, the life that you have or the life that you want to have. Where do certain things need to be addressed for you to be able to have that life, to go the direction you want to go in? So this is shining a major light on things that need to be addressed that maybe you've been keeping private or that you've been avoiding or that you haven't wanted to look at regarding family dynamics, the home situation, childhood. You may need to assert yourself in a certain situation, you know, that may be difficult for you. Uh, you know, you may have a parent or a family member uh, get a little bit riled up where you have to kind of expose something. You do want to make sure that you don't take things too far or don't take things to extremes, though, because that's another very common energy that could come up around this time. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Capricorn. You could have some stuff going on in your career with authority figures. Um, you know, your direction in life, your accomplishments, your goals, uh, your reputation, there could be some tension coming up there uh, as well. But let me know down below if this resonates Capricorn and definitely keep me updated. And uh, if you didn't see the first part of this video, definitely go back and watch that because it adds a lot more context and I think will help out a lot more and add a lot more to your reading. But uh, yeah, we're going to move on to Aquarius. So. Aquarius, this full moon's happening in your third house. And so this is a realization of your surroundings. This is a realization of where you need to take action, where you need to speak up on something uh, with people that are close to you, uh, in your environment in some way. You know, this is a time of really seeing how, you know, maybe you've been not really sharing how you truly think about something or your opinions about something because you've been listening to others or letting others share their opinions or something along those lines. So this is really going to be a time, Aquarius, where it's going to be very easy to have like word vomit where you're just kind of saying things, you know, but you want to be sure because it, it could get, it could get a little extreme. So you want to watch out for that where, you know, you may need to you may end up taking things a little bit too far to an extreme or you may get into some extreme thinking, you know, in some way where you're like obsessing about something mentally. Um, so you would you do want to watch out for that. But other than that, other than that, this could be a time of really getting active. This could be a time of asserting yourself or speaking your truth in some way of seeing where, you know, maybe you've been kind of keeping your mouth shut in regards to something or where you need to assert your opinion um, or where you need to assert yourself or take action or reflecting on your actions or inaction in some way. So those are some things that you could see coming up. You could also be learning something or relearning something, like getting back into something that you have already been into. Uh, this could be a time of intense conversations that come up as well. And you reflecting on possibly past wounds um, that hold you back in some way. So yeah, definitely let me know down below if this resonates Aquarius. I'd really love to hear your feedback as always. And if any of this, if you see any of this stuff coming up, if you haven't listened to the first part of this, I would definitely go do that. It will give a lot more context. So moving on to Pisces. Uh, for Pisces, this full moon is happening in your second house of money, finances, resources, your priorities. You know, you're really like seeing where your priorities need to be a little bit more you focused, where you need to be a little bit more concerned with yourself and what you need to do rather than maybe your relationship or other people or things going on with others. Um, you know, there may have been something going on with your partner or other people in your life or, uh, you know, certain money issues to do with other people, uh, certain connections you have, transactional relationships that you have uh, to certain institutions or whatever money you owe or money that's owed to you. And now you're kind of like, okay, I need to get back to me. I need to start worrying about myself and my priorities and what I need to be doing and that kind of thing. So that could really be coming up because there could be a lot going on with other people in your life around this time. And this is a time where it's like you have to balance that out with worrying about yourself right now. You have to balance that out and think about yourself. Think about your own money, your own priorities, the things that you have to do, you know. And so that is basically what I see coming up for you, Pisces. Definitely let me know down below if that resonates. And make sure to watch the 
uh, beginning of this video because it will add a lot more context to that. And that is basically everything for this Aries full moon video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to comment down below and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye.